All right, thank you, Paul. Time now is 646, and 9-11 was the day that changed everything. And for Muslim Americans, the 20th anniversary is a stark reminder of how things changed for them in their own country. Whether shopping, doing community work, or traveling, many felt scrutinized and profiled simply because they happened to be Muslim. Our Paula Tutman takes a look at what it's like to be a so-called visible Muslim post 9-11. If you saw me in person for the first time, you would make immediate emotional judgments. You might say, there's Paula Tutman from Channel 4. Or if you don't watch Channel 4, you might say, oh, that's a woman, or a black woman, or a short woman, or a noisy woman. But how would those perceptions change, for instance, if I wore an umta and also covered my head with an hijab, and you were seeing me for the very first time and didn't know anything else about me, what would your judgments be? What would your perception of me be? For so many Americans who happen to be Muslim, they know how they're seen since 9-11. It's the way they look at you. It's the way the heads turn. They see it in the eyes and the faces of so many non-Muslim Americans. You see people make comments. You hear them make comments. Suhaila Amen remembers September 11th, 2001 well. So does her mother, Lila. And I'd walk to my office and broke down. So does Imam Kazaruni of the Islamic Center of America in Dearborn, who was living in Colorado at the time. I never forget that morning I was taking my children uh, to take them to school, and the TV was on. And I looked at the TV and the first plane went into the building. So by the time I, t I took them to school and came back, the whole world had to change. And in their shock and grief, like most every other American on that day, the pain, the numbness, the disbelief, they experienced something in addition, wrath. My house was attacked, uh, my car was attacked. People began throwing pig's blood, pl uh, pig's head, on all kinds of things against the Islamic Center. So it was pandemonium. For the so-called visible Muslim. Life was a lot easier, a lot easier to move around, a lot easier to take care of business without being looked at in a different way. The 20 years since 9-11. We would walk in there with our hijab. Boarding a plane, an ordeal. And you have everybody turning heads and wondering if they're going to be safe. When you're visibly Muslim, people pay closer attention to you when you get onto a plane. You see those looks, you see the side eyes. Most every parent will hug their child goodbye before a big trip, but for Lila, when she says goodbye to her daughter, it is a different, be smart. It is a different, okay, mom, I love you. be safe. <laughs> they see you as something different, as someone who doesn't belong. When I was born and raised here, and I deserve to be here just as much as anyone else does. Imam Kazwini is with the Islamic Institute of America. And all those mass shootings that take place in our high schools and malls and colleges, uh, what do we call them? Why don't we call them terrorist attacks? Why? Because our media has this label ready only for Muslims. If someone is non-Muslim, is engaged, no, they don't use that label, and that's how they've been able to brainwash many Americans by associating our religion, Islam, with terrorism. To know how we practice and how we value our faith and our traditions, to watch somebody hijack our faith and say that they're doing it in the name of Islam was something that sickened us. In this home, there is a beloved child. <laughs> and a beloved elder. Am I your favorite? Yeah, I'm your favorite. Uh, yeah, you are my favorite. Am I your favorite? Yeah, I'm your favorite. For all American generations. And so as the nation prepares to remember what they have vowed to never forget, for many Americans who happen to be Muslim, there has never been an opportunity to forget. I think it's important for people to understand that at the end of the day, we're all Americans. We're all here trying to fulfill our purpose in life. We may look different. We may have different practices and different traditions, but we all want the same thing, to be successful and to have opportunities that will help us to flourish and to be the people that we want to be. So on this day, in every corner of the United States, we will be remembering, we will be commemorating. But for so many of our neighbors and fellow Americans 
who just happen to be Muslim. They feel all of that as well, but also fear because this day, the 20th anniversary, which is a singular event, also puts Islamophobia back on the radar for those who choose hate over a religion or for a religion that had nothing to do with this. It had everything to do with those individuals who perpetrated it. Guys? Well, thank you so much for that powerful story and the opportunity to hear you know, from folks in our community, our neighbors. Thank you so much, Paula. Yeah, it's just so important to hear from those communities around us. Yeah, our neighbors. Way that, yeah, our, our neighbors and our friends, you know, think about this day. Yeah, for sure. And how it's impacted folks differently. Yes.